Wham bam, there goes Pam. And here comes a whole new meta. Now you need to know that this Brawl Stars tier list is brought to you in partnership with BrawlStats.com and the Brawl Stats app on iOS and Android. Brawl Stats syncs with the data from the actual Brawl Stars servers to help you track your trophy progress, show you the current and upcoming map rotation, and give you the best recommended brawlers for every individual map brought to you by me and my team of incredible tier list collaborators. There's a link in the description below and you guys have got to download it if you're not already using it, guys. Let's go ahead and start off by talking about the gem grab tier list. I'll give you a quick moment if you want to screenshot it and that moment is past and gone. Jean is moving from the B tier up into the S tier, replacing Nita as the golden S tier brawler. Since the last tier list, Jean was buffed with greater star power healing and a daunting ability to pull brawlers through walls, which is absolutely key in his dominance. His ability to threaten gem carriers from a distance and in an instant completely change the tide of battle makes him the most formidable brawler in the mode. Ah! Okay. That was annoying. <laughs> Bo's also moving from A up into the S tier. With Jean's dominance and a nerf to Pam, Bo finally has a little bit of time to shine. Now, while he's not Jean, his notable range and relevant burst damage, also possibly from a distance, allows him to contest with Jean and outrange most of the other gem carrier options. Carl's being added into the S tier. Carl's buffs were huge for him. He went from being one of the least powerful brawlers in the game to one of the most overwhelming. With the increased attack speed, Carl's main attack is less of a liability and is easier to land. His increased consistency in combat allows him to remain relevant until those moments where he supers and overwhelms the opponent. Pam is actually moving down from the S tier into the A tier. Haha, <laughs> yes! She going down! But only a little bit, guys. A minor nerf to Pam's health and attack along with the new turnaround meta with Jean being so viable made her drop from the long time reigning queen of the mode down to A tier. She simply does not have the range to contest with Jean's threat. Spike is also moving from the S tier down to the A tier. With Jean being so dominant in the mode, Spike's squishiness is really a big problem. He's a prime target for Jean to try and pull in and in this meta, a laner's ability to stay alive and push up the map to threaten the carrier is crucial crucial to ensuring that Jean does not get the opportunity to pull the enemy carrier. Terra is also moving down from the S tier into the A tier. Once again, a lot of this actually has to deal with Jean kind of power creeping Terra a little bit because while she has the ability to pull multiple brawlers and deal and wipe a team, Jean is able to pull that one individual target that matters the most, the Jean carrier, from a much further distance. Her low health and low damage, especially from a distance, have made her see less action in competitive play. Daryl is actually moving down from the A tier into the B tier. Despite his very slight buff, other stronger options still exist within the mode. Now while he does synergize with Poco, he doesn't see very much competitive play. Crow is also moving up from the F tier into the B tier. A buff is exactly what he needed to see at least a little bit of viability in gem grab again. Increased damage to his main attack allows him to act as a greater deterrent for brawlers trying to push up the lanes. That's it for gem grab. Now let's go ahead and go into solo showdown. Once again, here's the tier list really fast for your reference. Spike is actually moving down from the S tier into the A tier. The thing with Spike is he's just so squishy that he's no longer dominant enough to be in the S tier, especially with some of these brawlers like Leon and Crow that are being a little bit more dominant. Bo's moving from the B tier up into the A tier. Bo's remodel was just the buff he needed, I guess, with his good range great DPS and mine to procure the area and not to mention a pretty decent amount of thick boy health uh, he's got it all basically Carl's being added into the a tier now for Carl a faster main attack means the ability to deter enemies with greater DPS potential and shape the battlefield his super is absolutely lethal to many enemy players which allows him to really thrive even in showdown Rico is moving from the a tier down into the B tier with the removal of some of the maps that he was pretty good on like cavern churn Terra is actually being removed from the competitive tier list for solo showdown without her super Terra just gains little respect on the field with her super her threat prevents teaming and allows people to chip her from afar because people kind of gang up on her and uh, there's a big reason why we don't see very much Terra play in solo showdown these days time to move on from solos and move into duos Jean is moving from the a tier and replacing Leon as the golden s tier brawler for duo showdown Jean's ability to isolate an enemy from afar and leave a player stranded without a partner is powerful Carl's being added into the s tier once again Carl's buff has made him incredible 
incredibly strong, arguably broken. With his ally representing an extension of his life in case he dies, Carl can take those aggressive risks and go largely unpunished. Daryl's moving from the S tier down into the A tier, while Carl is representing a ranged and overall better tankier threat than Daryl. Daryl just isn't strong enough to really qualify for the S tier. Mortis is also moving from the S tier down to the A tier. He can struggle with those melee brawlers in combat, as typically they result in a 2v1 type of situation. Shelly's being removed from the competitive tier list, with Island Invasion and Cavern Churn being removed from the game. She lost two of her best maps, and that allowed her to see some competitive play in the first place. Now, if you are in lower trophy areas, then Shelly is a great option, simply because people don't know how to keep their distance, and they forget to uh, check those bushes for Shelly's. Up next, let's talk about Heist. Here is the Heist to your list for you guys. Brock is actually going to be replacing Bull as the Golden S tier brawlers. His range allows him to exert control from a distance and that allows him to prevent other enemies from actually charging up their supers, like Bull does for example. Colt is moving from the A tier up into the S tier. Now with these thicker safes having a little bit more HP, over time range control has become increasingly more dominant in Heist. Colt's DPS makes him a formidable ranged threat to the enemy safe, which, once again, absolutely justifies this S tier placement. Daryl's moving from the S tier down to the A tier. His lower DPS makes him a less dominant threat to the enemy safe. Crow is moving up from the B tier into the A tier. With the greater oomph, post buff Crow, Damage is much more relevant at deterring enemies from progressing up the field, and the burst damage from his jumps more successfully results in kills. El Primo's moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Once again, with a greater variety in ranged options, El Primo struggles with loading his first super to begin with, which makes it difficult for him to then continue to use his super over and over again. Poco's being removed from the competitive tier list. Now, while he was used to facilitate tanks, Poco lacks the range and DPS to remain competitively viable, especially where some of those tanks are becoming less uh, competitive options in Heist. Leon's also being removed from the competitive tier list. He was kind of hanging on there by a thread. He struggles against those longer brawlers like Colt and Brock because he deals so little damage from the distance. Spike's also being removed from the B tier. He just doesn't see that competitive play because there are stronger options that are able to take him out easily from a distance. Like I said, Brock. Now let's go ahead and talk about Brawl Ball. Once again, guys, grab your screenshots because it doesn't stay up for long. Carl's being added into the S tier and replacing Spike as the golden S tier, the best brawler for Brawl Ball. Now, similar to Terra, Carl's super absolutely shapes the battlefield. He can overwhelm offensively, and if needed, he can use his super as a means to become accessible to a goal opportunity. His super also allows him to cover very large distances, which justifies him becoming the new best brawler in Brawl Ball. Terra is actually moving from the S tier into the A tier. Despite having a super that is absolutely built for the mode, the large number of ranged threats and dominance of spawners prevents Terra from offering the same mileage as previous metas. It's just too hard for her to deal a lot of damage from a distance, and sometimes it just takes too long for her to charge up her super. Jean is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. Jean's ability to displace brawlers for a goal opportunity or isolate them for the ultimate result of a 3v2, which is usually going to take them out, is really powerful. Poco's moving from the B tier up into the A tier. Now, while Poco is often outranged, he has amazing control of the middle. His ability to pinch and heal teammates allows for his allies to sustain their presence on the field, and goal opportunities are often made more effective because of his recently buffed healing super. Crow is actually jumping all the He's supering, he's jumping from F tier all the way up into the A tier. Now, similar to in Heist, his damage increase is more relevant to deterring enemies from progressing up the field. And while he's not quite S tier, he is absolutely a competitive option in Brawl Ball now. Bo's moving up from the F tier up into the B tier. As a ranged tank with great DPS, Bo offers some uniquely ranged control. His mines can mess with the enemies, it can break walls, or even temporarily keep people pushed back so that he can actually operate. Now, we got the bounty tier list. Boom. Screenshot time. Gene is actually moving from the A tier up into the S tier. His range and chip damage, even though it doesn't do very much from a, a distance, is great for keeping enemies damaged and preventing them from healing up. But that's not what makes him S tier. Gene's pull is absolutely devastating in bounty. Bo's moving from the A tier up into the S tier. With respect to range and DPS, Bo's thickness allows him to navigate the field without falling victim to the burst potential of dominant threats like Piper and Gene, even Brock. What can I say? 
Birdman OP. Carl's being added into the A tier. With respect to range and his ability to swarm squishy brawlers, Carl is definitely deserving of his A tier. And the fact that he's so incredibly tanky for being able to attack from a range also makes him a solid option. Pam is moving from the S tier all the way down into the B tier. Pam's chip damage from a distance just really doesn't do very well against some of these brawlers that are able to more burst people down from a ranged uh, distance, like, you know, Brock and even Bo. And Gene. Gene, oh my gosh. Rico's moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Rico is very map dependent. His low HP and his need to like kind of hover around makes him a prime target, especially against brawlers like Penny's turret or against Gene, who is very easily able to take uh, Rico out. Daryl's moving from the A tier down into the B tier. The increased power and variety of range options just has made uh, melee brawlers less viable. Crow is moving from the F tier into the B tier. A little bit more damage is what he needed to see a little bit more competitive gameplay. His super, once again, is great for securing those kills, but his low HP makes him less of an assassin option than Mortis. Dynamike is moving from the F tier into the B tier. There are a few maps that allow Dynamike to thrive. Dynamike is particularly relevant over like Barley because of his ability to burst brawlers out, whereas most people can just like run away from a Barley who's better at controlling the map. Poco is being removed from the competitive tier list due to melee brawlers becoming less of a viable option. Poco has less of a means for him to actually load up his super in order to actually support those tankier brawlers. He also just does not have very much burst potential from a distance, which makes him a poor option in bounty. Next is the siege tier list. That meant to take a screenshot. Carl's being added in as <laughs> he's replacing Jesse as the golden S tier brawler for siege as a ranged tank. Carl not only has the ability to pinch enemies, but he also has the health to stay alive. And in Siege, staying alive is absolutely everything. To top it off, Carl's super zones enemies and prevents them from actually getting to those bolts. And that increased mobility allows him to collect those bolts easier as well. Leon's also moving from the A tier up into the S tier. With walls being added into a lot of these maps, Leon has a means to actually approach enemies. Without those walls, it's kind of tough to know which angle he'll be approaching from. And in Siege, once he has his super charged up, he can kind of wait for the perfect opportunity to then attack somebody else with his super and recharge up his super. That super recycling ability of Leon is actually really incredible in allowing him to become a very dominant threat in Siege. Spike is moving from the A tier up into the S tier. Now despite his low health, Spike does a great job at controlling the map, which is super important in Siege. He can optimize an offense with his super, and he has the burst damage needed for defense. Colt is moving from the F tier into the S tier tier with a newfound strategy that makes Colt ridiculously overpowered. With the longer game times, recent seed strategies have started to capitalize on reshaping the field. Colt is perfect for this because once he charges up his super, he can get rid of those walls, and once the map is completely reshaped, he can outrange most enemies, burst damage down uh, to the Ike, or even use his DPS to destroy a bot uh, that's threatening his own base. Bulls moving from the S tier down to the A tier, with dive strategies being less dominant, especially since the most recent changes to Siege, and with the, the strategy of Colt uh, reshaping the map, starting to become a little bit more of a prevalent strategy, Bull as a strictly melee brawler has really decreased viability. Penny's also moving from the S tier down to the A tier. On the newer maps, there's less opportunities for Penny to actually threaten the Ike with her tur turret. Her low DPS makes it tough for her to sustain control, and while she's still a good option, she's definitely not S tier any longer. Jessie's also moving from the S tier into the A tier. Jessie's slower shot speed has become a very small liability. Her turret is quite fragile to throwers, which are more prevalent, and Penny's turret and uh, wall breaker strats also really make it difficult on Jesse. Nita's moving from the S tier down to the A tier as well. Now, while Nita offers incredible control, a lot of the brawlers in the, that are actually really good in Siege are high DPS uh, brawlers that are intended to try and take out the bot, and that means that Nita's berry is going to struggle a lot as well. Jean is moving from the B tier into the A tier. Pulling enemies through walls and into the Ike's zone is essentially an instant KO. For this reason, Jean's great at sustaining control, although his low DPS does cause him to struggle a little bit against the bot. You do have to play Jean very carefully if you're going to be playing him in Siege. Dynamite is moving from the A tier to the B tier. With the possibility of the wall 
Breaker strategies and new maps being introduced into the game, Dynamite's viability as a thrower has decreased. El Primo is also moving from the A tier down to the B tier. Again, with the possibility of maps opening up a lot, especially in this competitive gameplay, El Primo becomes a massive liability. Crow's moving from the F tier up into the B tier. Surprisingly, despite his low DPS, Crow works in Siege simply due to the fact that his control from his poison and his ability to disrupt enemy control by jumping on them with his super and isolating enemies allows him to become a competitive option if used properly. Terra is being removed from the B tier. While the zoning conferred by Terra's super is redeeming her low health and low DPS from a range make her very less impactful in this mode. Woo! That was awesome, but we still have the overall tier list guys here you guys go as you may recall every brawler gets one point for being in the b tier two points for being in the a tier and three points for being in the s tier for each of the modes they do not get extra points for being a golden s tier brawler because there can literally only be one golden s tier brawler pam is still at the top despite going down three points since the last tier list carl went from zero points all the way up to being tied with Pam for first place. He's ridiculously strong, guys. Bo went up from 9 points up to 13 points. Gene shot up from 9 points to 15 points. And Crow nearly doubled in points, going from 7 to 13 points because of his buff and because of Pam's nerf. Terra actually dropped from 8 points down to 4 points. Shelly remains at the bottom of the tier list with only 3 points. Now, I could not have made this tier list without the help of my fantastic tier list collaborators. Huge thank you to them and a huge thank you to BrawlStats.com and the BrawlStats app on iOS and Android for partnering with me on these tier list videos. It's through their help that I'm able to make these tier lists possible and, like I said, it's a fantastic app that you're going to want to download, not only for the features that we have in it right now, but also for some of the fantastic features that we're planning on adding in the future. Make sure you guys download Brawl Stats using the link below so you do not miss out. I get comments all the time whenever there's a new update, people are always like, hey, when's the tier list? When's the tier list? When's the tier list? I get why you guys like it so much. If We've got fantastic people working on it to try and bring you guys the best tier list possible, so I appreciate you while we took the time to try and figure out exactly what the best brawlers for this meta are. Make sure you subscribe for future tier lists and future Brawl Stars videos similar to this one. For now, this is Kairos time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.